I am going to uh, entertain a motion to waive the reading of Article 11 in its entirety due to its length. Moved by Mr. Waddell, seconded by Ms. Barnes. Uh, is there a motion to open discussion on Article 11? Mr. Griffin, uh, moved. So I have a second. Seconded by Ms. Barnes, and I will look to uh, Mr. Jacobs, um, our Public Works Director, for an explanation review of Article 11. Thank you. Um, almost a year ago, February 22nd, we had a sewer main back up um, on this particular line in the center of Lafayette Road, just north of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, primary reason for uh, that backup was uh, the buildup of grease and um, we call fog, floatables, organics, and grease that it solidified and uh, basically jammed the pipe and the water lifted the, the manhole right off the, um, off the <coughs> frame. This pipe has been in for a number of years. It was inspected in 1967. Um, and found, video inspected and found to be severely cracked and at that time was recommended that the town replace the force main. The top right photo in this presentation that's on the screen now, you can see some of the significant cracks in the upper right hand corner. Questions come up, why don't we go in there more to prevent this type of uh, blockage that we had in February 22nd last year, why don't we go in more frequently and clean the pipe? Uh, the, Equipment that we have to clean the pipe um, is a, it's a jet truck. Uh, it looks like a fire hose with a big nozzle on it. It goes down through the pipe, blasting, if you will, everything out of its way and forcing it further down the pipe. The lower photo here shows a section of pipe that's actually missing. It's been missing, and we've known it's been missing since 1989. And uh, what you're seeing in that lower right-hand photo is soil all behind the pipe. So right now there's certain sections of the pipe that are actually just missing. And um, our concern is that uh, it, it could possibly lead to a sinkhole. Uh, it could possibly lead to, if you will, the ultimate collapse of this particular pipe. Um, questions been raised um, offline in the non-public. When was the line put in? Um, these are plans that the department has. Um, we've had sewers downtown pre-1934. These are the plans, very technically oriented plans. Um, what they show is that at that time we had a combination of storm drains and sewer pipes. Uh, literally when you flushed, it went into the storm drain and from there it went to a brook um, just north of Dunkin, well, that no longer exists, but at the time it was just north of Dunkin' Donuts and it went to the uh, west side and then over towards the railroad tracks. So when we got a good rain, we got a good flush. But since 1934, and um, other parties are correct, there were appropriations in the 40s to uh, change this, um, but we've always had sewers down there uh, in, in various stages and states. So our information leads us to believe that, yes, this pipe is somewhere uh, existed, possible sections of it in 34 through 44. So it is that old, it's been there that long. The second photo uh, on the screen right now shows the service area. Uh, as you can see, it not only serves um, this section of Lafayette Road, that's the line in red is what we'd actually uh, seek to replace, but the service area goes uh, a lot further uptown, and it also includes, oh, if I'm seeing this right, portions of High Street uh, over to Exeter Road, up past LeMay's Tavern, uh, and all the way up to Rice Terrace. So it's a very significant area of town, a very uh, strong business and residential area of town that this particular uh, pipe serves. Um, the same engineers that have designed the Church Street Pump Station, also uh, this force main have estimated the cost to be approximately $1.1 million. And the idea would be that we would go in there, if this gets approved after the Seafood Festival this fall, to uh, replace that line in its entirety. Uh, we've also had discussions with the water company. They'd be out there this spring uh, moving their uh, water line of 
portions of it out of our way so that we can get moving on this project and uh, get this uh, rectified. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Anyone wishing to be heard on Article 11? Mr. Griffin. Yes. I would like to um, say that this is a problem that's been long overdue in all of the boards that I've served on at the Board of Selectmen. This has been an issue that we're quite aware of. Um, one really good thing is that we have, you know, they've got a really good handle on the situation right now. And when Mr. Jacobs was hired by the Board of Selectmen, one of the pluses that we hired him for is his knowledge of these type of systems. And he's done a great job. He has a good team. And he's had a great way of explaining this. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Before I get to Mills Woolsey, the cost on Article 11 is a bond article uh, in the gross amount of $1,100,000. Uh, it requires a three-fifths vote. And it was recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee 11 to 1. Ms. Woolsey. Yes. Um, I, I support this article, but I want to point out, in light of what Mr. Griffin has just said, in 1986, the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee teamed up to approve and set in place the first of five proposed sewer construction bonds. The first bond for $7.8 million was passed in 1986, and that sewered Mill Road, Little River Road, Mace Road, and that whole area. But the second bond was never, never put up for a public vote. This is a failure of leadership all the way along. Had we passed those sewer bonds, this road and others in this community would certainly be better off, and it would have been a more a better planned project. So I appreciate the work on this. We do need to do it. But I hope that boards of selectmen in the future pay attention to planning. Thank you, Ms. Wolfsey. Mr. Zanoy. This is relatively simple. Uh, I would ask the, the uh, Christy, if she's here, the director of finance, or Fred, to tell me what the uh, how much funds we have in the unassigned fund balance, the town unassigned fund balance. We're going to try to get that answer for you. At the time um, the tax rate was set, we had just under $6 million. Uh, my projected year in is at 6.4. Fine. I would like to uh, fund this from the unassigned fund balance. I would like this $1,100,000. i am not fighting the... Uh, what Chris has got here, or what's been said. But if we've got five, six million sitting in the unassigned fund balance, let, let it work for the taxpayer. We don't have money trees out there. I would like to remind people that at the last uh, survey of, uh, we had in town here, 37% of the people were 55 and over. Okay? So if we've got money sitting five to six million or more, I'd like to use it for this wouldn't be, this would be the first one, but I have one or two others today. Let's start using some of that money for the benefit of the taxpayer. That's what my, my motion would be, to transfer this from the unassigned fund balance to, uh, to, the, uh, to the funding of this particular article. Of course, that would change the fiscal impact as well. No tax impact. Taxes have already been paid in previous operating budgets. So, Mr. Zanoy, I'm going to need you, consistent with the, um, the rules of the meeting, I'm going to need, I take that to be a motion to amend. I'm going to need to have it in writing, but are you suggesting that um, after the first paragraph you delete everything, um, and um, so all the reference to the bonding um, right. is deleted, and so the first paragraph remains? Uh, and the rest is deleted. Be no tax impact. Taxes have already been paid. Yeah, we don't control that impact note. If if the uh, amendment passes, then the the uh, okay. finance director would uh, would uh, attend to that piece of thing. But if that's your motion, I, Mr. Kilroy has a piece of paper over here. Uh, I would need you to um, to write that out. Um, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, is there any second to Mr. Um, Zanoy's? Um, you second Mr. Zanoy's motion to amend. I just need a second. Okay. 
quick procedural question. Would the, would the SRF funding still apply if this project was funded out of the, out of the uh, UFB? Is anyone on the board of selectmen? Um, I just the want to know if we get a payback from the SRF. I believe the uh, SRF funding is a loan, yeah. and as such, would require a vote, just as some of the subsequent articles, and would be a three-fifths. Okay. So I, I SRF gather the, is a loan. I gather the answer is no. I don't know if Mr. Jacobs has any input on that. Uh, council is correct. It is a loan. Um, if we take the money from the undesignated fund balance, basically saying that we have the money. Um, I think it would be de looked at unfavorably at the state level. If you have the money to do it, why should we loan it to you? Right. When there are other communities that don't have the money and do need the loan. So it would be more, it would come play out in the eligibility criteria. Okay. So Mr. Zanoy, have you made out your uh, motion to amend? I need that in writing. Well, I thought you more or less summarized by saying I was helping, but you got to put your signature to it. And it can be as simple as delete all, everything after paragraph one, if that's the Well, answer. I'm going to have to sit down then and write it out. I'm not going to sit here and hold a meeting on this Well, write it out, and we'll see if anybody wishes to be heard on the Zanoy Amendment. Mr. Jones wishes to be heard on the Zanoy Amendment, and you're going to have to, um, Mr. Zanoy, uh, yield that podium to him, if you would, please. You can come right over here by Mr. Kilroy if you want a uh, if you want a hard surface. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Sure. To the Zanoy amendment. To, go over here to, the to the Zanoy amendment, which is saying pay it all now. Yes, yes, sir. I uh, I support this amendment. Uh, some of you may not know I am on the budget committee. I supported this one article as it was written, um, but I do favor this amendment because I think it's an improvement for several reasons. One of which. We have the money in the unsigned fund balance. Some people call it the surplus. Uh, we have the money there for it. There's no reason to borrow money if we already have the money saved, so to speak. Secondly, we're going to save the cost of interest. Regardless of how low that interest might be under SRF or what have you, we will be saving on interest. Additionally, no longer will we require a three-fifths majority to pass this. This radically improves the chance of getting the work done because it will only require a 50% majority. Is that not correct? Anybody up there in heaven? 50% would be required if we were simply taking out of the un un unsigned fund balance, correct? If there is not a loan component to this, you're yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, from a procedural, no longer be three-fifths, but be a 50% majority. Correct. So it's a, it's a radically improved chance of actually getting the work done if we only have to have a 50% majority as opposed to a 60% majority. So we're saving money, increasing the chance of getting the work done. That's why I support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Page. On the Zanoy Amendment. Nathan Page, 200 Rakeside Road. Just, is there any unintended uh, uh, unintended negative consequences of not doing it this way. Fred's going to comment in a few minutes. Maybe you should let him speak. Okay, first. very good. Maybe so we need to yield the floor to Fred. Mr. Welch? He's down there. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Frederick Welch, town manager. Uh, using the unreserved fund balance is, of course, an option anytime a town meeting wishes to move that. Let me just explain to the town as assembled here today that those funds are used to fund our daily operations. We have to pay our bills. We have to pay the school. We also have about $3 million of that sum, theoretical sum, that is unpaid taxes that we're covering. So taking additional money out of here is going to reduce the amount of money we have available to, to function as a town. That may mean that we're going to have to borrow in anticipation of taxes. When I first arrived in, in, in the town, we were spending at least $100,000 a year in interest for in, in, uh, anticipation of tax borrowing. We really don't want to go back to that again because right now we're spending zero. 
The Department of Revenue requires us to keep at least 5%. That's their recommendation for our fund balance. We are over that at this point in time. We have plenty of money. There's no question to run our operations. However, if we deplete that balance, and the selectmen have every year appropriated a million dollars to go to, re to decrease property taxes for the town, that won't happen because we'll be spending that money on this warrant article. We also may have to borrow in lieu of taxes. That's probably a bad thing for the town to do. Our current bond rating, which has just been certified by Moody's, is based upon our keeping approximately $6.9 million in that fund balance. I'm sure that's going to change. Right now, we have a better bond rating than most of the cities in the state, and we'd like to keep that bond rating. Just some information for your, your, uh, your reference in regard to this article. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the Visanoi um, amendment? Seeing none, uh, Jerry, I'm going to let you take a break, and because we're going to vote on the Visanoi um, amendment. Thank you. Um, Christine, if you could scroll on 11 so that we can see the full extent of the strikes. Thank you. Um, so everything other than the first paragraph um, is proposed to be deleted by this amendment. The short version is instead of bonding 1.1 million for this project, you would be paying for it in a single sum. That changes the uh, vote required for passage from three-fifths, 60 percent, to 50 percent. So all those in favor of the Zanoy Amendment, please raise your voter card. Down cards. All opposed? Down cards. I declare that the Zanoy Amendment has been defeated. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 11? as it is uh, printed. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. Uh, I didn't speak on the last Warren article uh, because there was a lot of people speaking about it. Uh, it's a project that needs to be done. I support that as well as this one. There's a key line in this article that states, Repla replacement is necessary before complete failure occurs. I don't anticipate a fire in my house. I have a fire extinguisher. I have a spare tire in my car in case of failure. These pipes, um, I'm not going to ask anybody if they were born in 1934. That would make you 83 years old. That would be rude of me to ask. But the people that are going to be affected by this could be of that age. There's a multi-story, multi-unit adult living community, Hampton and Village Center. You might know it's behind Dunkin' Donuts. All condos for the adult community in this town. They might not be in this room. They could be. I also know there's condos at the uh, old Oddfellows lot. Multi-story, multi-unit. That's at 428 Lafayette Road. That would be affected by this Warren article as well. And back in 1934 when these pipes were put in, some of these pipes, uh, Gas was 10 cents a gallon. The average new home was six grand. That's a long time for these pipes to go without replacement. I hope when I'm 83 years old uh, that the projects that we put in today will last. Um, but some of these pieces have been missing since 1989. I was six. And I'm 33 now. And these pipes have just been missing and deteriorating and, and wasting away. If we don't, if we don't fund these projects now, the need for these projects is is evident. You have a lot of citizens, a lot of taxpayers in this town. Not to mention the businesses. Everybody knows the businesses on Route One are great, um, but the residents on Route One are great as well. And a failure of that line, a backup of that line, would affect all those people there. Um, and hopefully, I can speak for them in support of of this article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Nyan? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Nyan, 2 Walnut Avenue. 
Um, I'm speaking uh, on this warrant article as uh, representative and uh, president of Experience Hampton. The uh, strategy that the Public Works Department has come up with to address a number of issues along Route 1 between Winnicunit and High Street uh, is a stra strategy that I believe is a well thought out, a complete strategy, um, and one that Experience Hampton is very willing to work uh, with Public Works on in terms of supporting uh, the different components of this uh, complete strategy. As you will hear later on today, um, Experience Hampton has put in a, uh, a warrant article to complement this particular uh, article. And uh, so on behalf of Experience Hampton, we fully support Article 11. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nyan. All right, Mr. Jones, I don't believe you've had an opportunity to speak to the main article. So, Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, if I might, I have a question for the DPW director uh, through the moderator. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing some further research on this last week, and I discovered on a video from uh, late November, I believe it was, that the originally approved article by the Board of Selectmen included verbiage such as a companion warrant article about making the street contiguous. Two weeks later, the Board of Selectmen took an amendment to remove that language at the recommendation of DPW. And I'm wondering what that original companion warrant article was about. It seemed to me about making the street contiguously paved or something to that effect. Can I get some? Well, let's, let's do it this way. I'll, I'll go to Mr. Jacobs um, simply on the why is it written the way it is written, or Ms. Hale, because that's, that's what we're really dealing with. I, I don't want to deal with what doesn't exist, uh, but I'll take... Re repeat what, what you had said again. Uh, uh, why are we doing it this particular way? Was there cons any consideration for another approach? Right, so the article in front of you is for the replacement of the sewer line. As Chris mentioned, water would come in at one time, and as John has uh, expressed, that we have a plan to also work on the street. Um, so at one time we thought about presenting another Warren article that would have been the street component, so the drainage, the pavement, the sidewalks. Um, with everything that's going on this year, it was decided not to put that forward this year. So the language was a leftover for what we thought of presenting to. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you for that explanation. So it sounds to me like what we're going to be discussing later today, Article 44, might have incorporated some of the uh, work that the original companion warrant article was intended for. So I'll be doing some further discussion on the side and, and, and speak on it at the time we're speaking on 44. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Another reason to stick around for the whole day, right? Okay. All right. Uh, seeing no one else on Article 11, we will 